My name is Liz Msane. I'm doing nursing, nursing at 3 um, in Bavane campus. My name is Lucisso Mfunwad Lamine. I'm a fourth year student at the University of Switzerland. I'm doing a bachelor in education. I have been the president of the SRC here. I'm Polan Fraser Lamini, a student here at Tilimcoke University of Creative Technology. I'm doing a TV and film production. My name is Noma Zugunenu, a third year student at the Limcoke University of Creative Technology. I'm doing PR, being public relations, and I'm attached as the Minister of Commerce, Trade and Industry. There is, there is, there is an effort that they are doing. Uh, sometimes I can't come out clearly. They are trying their level best, as we do have the social welfare department, the SST department, the health desk, environmental, all those are responsible for making sure that each and every student is well. It does, because those students that didn't get internship, the school helped them by placing them in in-house internship. They are always worried about what is going to happen about the students. Always worried. To a certain extent. To a certain extent because uh, in life you should learn to appreciate some of the things that don't just come. Because some of the things, they depend on how you look at things. See. They do take care of us, but you know very, you know that you, you can't live without the challenges. Not every time that it can be provided for you. Um, in my case, I have to repeat like a module right now. So the school helped me in in the sense that they said I should continue with my internship and attend classes at the same time. For example, we have a refectory. We have a library. We have. A challenge with the desk and the other things, but then, yeah. Otherwise, we're not talking about things like I'm not well, eh, that one, they easily take care of that one. I can't write my test because I have some problems. I can't write the examination because I'm sick or whatsoever. That one is well taken care of. Although sometimes we may find that uh, there are certain problems there and there, but uh, they're not that much. By the time the other group the other group graduates, I'll also, I'll also be able to graduate with them. Sometimes they, they, do not, they, 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 they do not afford to give you all what you expect to get. For my experience here, the past three years, I think the reason behind the strikes and all those things is because it seems like there is a challenge when it comes to communicating between us as students and our sponsor. We, we do not just plan to say, I'm going to strike. It is because of the pressure. When there is so much pressure, when there is frustration, when the students are frustrated, they will tell you that you want to go to the band. Now, the major cause of the strikes and in, in the, um, the doing around in this country is poor communication. We like poor communication at, at the big deal. It's happening because Switzerland, is, I mean, sorry, the government is failing to fulfill its promises to the students. It's miscommunication. There's, there's usually a breakdown in communication. And I've realized that if, if, if there are students and they have concerns, and the concerns are not attended to quickly, then they are agitated. That's when you see the other side of the Swazi students, that which you never knew before. 
But for the strike that took place in Limpopo, there was a lot of miscommunication. Because after the strike, when we sat down and asked the students, really, what were you striking for? There wasn't any clear information as to why. And the second thing that I realized is that they don't know how to channel the right information to the right people. Limpopo is not the one that gives them the allowance. But I don't know what type of information they got from there to agitate them to end up bombing the school and all that. The allowances. And of late it's been more of not just the allowances but the scholarship as well. But uh, can you tell me uh, it's been months now since the university opened, but uh, some of the students do, still don't have their scholarships paid in time. So that's what causes university students to strike a lot. The culture of red tape with the government. The government is, is quite slow in dealing with students' life. We know that students are, are more of a faster generation. They, they like to Things, there are things to be done now, and, uh, if not later than, than never. They like their things to be in order. It's not like they're just rebels. Uh, they know what they want. Most often, government doesn't provide what they want, and they have to, to renegotiate with the government. Unfortunately, they have to use their method. They know better, the striking method. It also doesn't do them much justice because they lose time in their studies. I think it's the only way to, to talk to the government and for the government to understand. Uh, because you engage the government in a peaceful manner, they just, it's just a sort of like, oh, okay, so what? We expect them to strike after all. Uh, that's, that's not a, a relationship that work. I don't know how much you've worked with government. During this crunch, practically everyone was owed by government. Practically everyone, I know businesses that closed because government couldn't pay on time because government had no money. Maybe the difference is those business people didn't act the way the students acted. The students decided to take to the streets and, and, and hail insults at Luto for delaying the money. If I had the money as minister responsible, I would have paid the students even before schools open, but we did not have the money. I have met students who actually pitched up for causes that knowing very well they have not been admitted. Others have actually forged the certificate, the Form 5 certificate. Others are not even supposed to be qualified. So you, you have some of this problem that you need to check. I have been out of office for three months. I understand even now the students are striking for the same money. That should show you that the problem is not an individual one, but the problem is where, where government has no money, you, you can't just make it there. If you look at the number of students that we are sponsoring locally and outside, and you look at the staff at the scholarship department, they don't even come to 10, and they have to deal with all this increasing number of students. We've tried to try and get the staff increased, we, we couldn't, and hence we had to come up with a policy which will now give us the legislative framework to actually increase the staff and actually take the issue of the scholarship away from government so that it becomes a standalone thing to, to allow even more people to study now, to access it, because you want to make it a loan fund. The scholarship loan must have two components. The first component is really to pay for your tuition and your study. The other one is what we've been debating about that if I am a son of a millionaire and you are a son of, you don't even have parents, is it fair for government to give me a, a, a accommodation and meal allowance just like you? It is not. We don't have a robust and legislative framework where if you get loan from government, and you get a job, you must pay back the law. 
unemployed and those who are not able to get proper jobs cannot obviously service the, the loan. But there are those who are able and earning a lot of money to pay back. So we need a system where they can bring back that money so that we can have more money to help the incoming students. I believe the students leaders have not seen the final policy. If I hear the stories you guys have been publishing, and this is one of the best policies to actually address all the concerns that the day you get your loan, you get your allowance the next day. You don't have to be waiting and moving up and down as it is happening now. Which again is not Luto's policy, it's a government policy to say let's move the issue of scholarship funding to a first world class. There are concerns from some of the students. Again, it's, I think it's lack of information that this policy is discriminating, saying if you're an orphan, you cannot get support. That is far from the truth. The policy is saying there should be provision made for those who are often and vulnerable. The policy, you start paying government when you start working. And this is the, the only loan that has such provisions. But if for some reasons you can't get a job, my brother, get this very clear to the students. Nowhere is the policy saying you shall pay. If, for instance, your guardian, as an orphan, is a grandmother out there who does not work, there's no way in the policy that says that old woman will have to find the money. This that will, if, if the students will take time on yourself, as Jenna is reading, you'll appreciate that we are moving it even further. In fact, the law is even saying, even if you want to do a course that is not in the priority list, now you have an opportunity to be funded. If you want to do something outside the priority list, we will give you a law and we will structure the conditions. You want to assure that with this course, you will get a job. The government is saying, if it's the priority ones that we believe will develop the country, and again, I, I want to emphasize, Whoever said journalism is not a priority, I think it's not the ministry that I was working for. What they were saying was, if you want to study journalism, the ministry responsible said, if we've got 10 posts, we we'll rather send communication engineers uh, rather than journalists for now. But there's nothing stopping them the next year to actually give journalism an opportunity which has been the case, and as you are aware, government has a department of journalism here, which is funded by government, by the way. And I would like to urge the students and every stakeholder to support the implementation of this policy because it says here, yeah, after six months of its approval, some of these things should be done. That will make it a lot easier, a lot quicker for the students to get their money, and also very predictable and very transparent. My feeling is students, should be in class and government should try her level best to pay them as quickly as they can, which is what we've always believed in as government.